Hello and welcome to this little extra. This is going to be the proof of the expected mean squares. I'm going to do it for A, the mean square A, but the process is the same for all of them. Notice that it's going to be a lot of algebra, and that's really all that this is. So let's start with proof. Let's see if I got a black pen. Notice that the mean squared a is just equal to 1 over a minus 1 times the sum of the squares a. So keep that in mind. I'm going to work with the sum of squares a for most of this. Expected value of the sum of squares a, well, what is the formula for the sum of squares a? It's just adding up over everything. Uh, well, let's see. If a, that's the first subscript. So that's the one that's going to keep its letter. Everything else is going to be dotted. And that's the usual formula for this. Um, remember back to a long time ago in your first stat class when you were calculating variances. The formula for the variance of x, and I'm using x here because it's a throwback to a long, long time ago. The actual formula is 1 over n minus 1 uh, times xi minus x bar squared. And that's how it was introduced to you. And this was a deviation. You squared the deviations. You found some sort of average squared deviation. So this formula had a meaning. But when you actually did the calculations, this was something along the lines of, what was it? I had it written down someplace. Is that we're going to apply this concept here. So this is just going to be equal to the expected value of adding up again over everything. Uh, that x sub i is going to be squared. That first part is squared. The second part is squared with an n. What is n here? What is n here? This is just ACN. It's the capital N. Here was the sample size. The capital of the sample size is just ACN. And that's got to be squared to match that. Put the closing bracket. And we can move on. So the step we just did was just pure algebra. Because when that equivalence was taught to you is shown algebraically, that would be the same. Going to distribute the expected value throughout. Now the next thing we're going to use is the identity that was very similar to what we just did. I don't want to start with variance of x. Expected value of x squared is equal to the variance of x plus expected value of x squared. In fact, this is just a rewriting of what I just did. So we've got expected values of some squares. So we're going to use that decompose it into its two parts. Because we can find a variance pretty easily, and we can find an expected value of just the x's pretty easily. But we're stuck with an expected value of a something squared, not so easy to deal with. x for this first part is just the yi dot dot bars. That's yi dot dot bar. yi dot dot bar. Minus ac and times, again we're going to use that same process. Oh, 
only in this case the x is the y dot 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 bar. There we go. Now first notice that we're only summing over the i's. The j's and the k's are con over, I'm, yeah, we're only summing over the i's. The j's and the k's are constant. So that means that this summing over everything is just going to be summing over the i, and summing over the j, summing over the k, show you here is that since we're over summing over is the i, what's inside the parentheses is constant with respect to the j's and the k's. So we can simplify this by pulling out a c and an n and getting rid of that summation. Because when you're summing over the j, nothing changed. This was constant with respect to those j's. And when you're summing over the k's, nothing changed because you're summing over, uh, it, this is uh, constant with respect to the k's. Okay, now, let's move this over to the left a little bit. That should be expected value. Algebra with some definitions in those that, that one stat trick. Now we know what the variance of y bar i dot dot is. Variance of y bar i dot dot, which has sigma squared, it's the variance of those epsilons, divided by what well, we summed over two indices to get that. Summed over the J index and we summed over the K index. There's C in the J index and there's K in the, uh, there's N in the K index. Expected value of Y bar dot I, well there's an I there. Expected value of Y bar I dot dot, just alpha I plus mu. Why? Check the linear model. The linear model was y i j k is equal to mu plus alpha i plus beta j plus, no, I'm sorry, alpha i plus gamma j plus the interaction term plus the epsilons. So this is the expected value of that y bar i. It's the grand mean plus the effect of alpha. Variance of y bar dot dot dot. That's going to be sigma squared divided by however many things you had to add together in order to get that y bar. We had to add together all of the alpha, all of the i's, all the j's, all the k's. There's ai's, cj's, and k's. Oops. And the expected value of y bar dot 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 is just the mean. So far so good? Can I go down one more level? I'm going to distribute the CN through and the summation. to make a simplifying assumption. That simplifying assumption is that mu is equal to zero. Why can we do that? For two reasons. The model, the linear model, which I don't have written up here, 
is overspecified. Mu can be anything as long as we interpret the alphas to be the difference in the a variable between what we observe and the mu. So we could set the mu to zero, which is exactly what we do when we look at the effects model. So since I'm setting mu equal to zero, this just comes out to be an alpha i squared. This is summation from i equals 1 to a. There's no subscript here. It's constant with respect to the i's. So there's your a sigma squared. Minus a c n times sigma squared over a c n. That's a sigma squared. I told you that if we're setting mu equal to 0, then we can interpret the alphas as the difference between the, the observed and 0. So ACN times zero is just zero. And we're almost done. I'm going, we've got an A sigma squared here and a sigma squared here. So we're going to stick them together and this will just be an A minus one times sigma squared. And then I've got this CN times summing, again you're summing over I, I equals one to A of those alpha I squareds. And that is the expected value of the sum squares a. But we were caring essentially about the mean squared a, not the sum of squared a. How do we get from sum of squares? We just divide through by an a minus 1. bad considering how much I don't like doing algebra. So here's how we started. We started with, we need to find the expected value of the mean squared a. Well, I noted that that was just 1 over a minus 1 times the sum of squared a. So I focused on the sum of squared a to begin with. Expected value of sum of squared a, we just plugged in sum of squared a. This next step was to change the way of writing this. These two are algebraically equivalent. Then I distributed the exponent, uh, the expected value throughout. And then I use the uh, expected value of x squared is equal to the variance of x plus the expected value of x squared. On both of these expected values, know that we were summing up over everything, but that inside only the i's changed. So what was inside only depended on the i's which meant that if we were summing over the j's and the k's, nothing inside the parentheses changed. So that's where we got the c because the j's were constant, the n because the k's were constant. And we were left with i equals 1 to a of this. Everything was constant over here, so we just got rid of the summation, placed with a, c, n. Found out the variance of y bar i dot dot. It's just sigma squared, the variance of the epsilons, divided by however many terms it took to calculate the expected value. Same thing here. Expected value of yi dot dot. Well, that's just alpha i, because that's what changes, plus mu. Then I made the simplifying assumption that mu is equal to zero, which changes absolutely nothing except for the interpretation of what those alphas, betas, and alph alphas, gammas, and alpha gammas are. So this alpha to the i, if mu is zero, this is the distance or the effect with respect to zero, not to the grand mean. And over here, variance of y bar dot 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 is just the variance of y, i, j, k, divided by however many terms it took to get the average, ACN, for the I, J, and K. Again, remember we 
made the sum assumption that mu or made the interpretation that mu is equal to zero, so that last part drops off as well. So we're left with a sigma squared, because the cn's cancel with these cn's and you're adding up i equals one to a of a constant. And then the cn's come in here, the mu goes away because it's zero, square sticks on the alpha sub i, and we still have the summation. On the far side, a cn's cancel, left with sigma squared, and that's zero. The next step is we have an a sigma squared minus the sigma squared, put those together, we get an a minus one sigma squared. Don't do anything with that. And this is the expected value of the sum of squared a. We cared originally about the expected value of the mean squared a. So we just divide through by a minus one. Just divide through by a minus one. A minus one sigma squared divided by a minus one gives us that sigma squared. A minus one doesn't simplify, and that's it. This is the proof for the expected value of mean squared a. Similar proofs exist for expected value of mean squared c. What are we calling them here? C, w for within, or e for error, total, etc. They all follow the same process. They all have the same whole lot of algebra, and you have to know what each of the symbols means. So this was the extra. Hopefully you enjoyed it a little bit and that your brain didn't explode too much. But again, it is just algebra.